In this video we're going to look at photogrammetry and creating a 3D model from a series of photographs that we've taken um, to create a realistic photo scanned model which can be used within our project. So the photographs that I've taken are on a micro scale but you can also look at macro scale um, and further along in this video we will look at importing the photogrammetry, the mesh that we've created in Meshroom into 3ds Max to use within our projects. Some of the tips that I've got for taking images, um, I looked at just a rock and you can see from the photographs from my iPhone it took some pretty high quality images that I found at the park and yeah, I, I think that um, upon a lot of trial and error, uh, the tips that I would give for the photos of the subject matter is to avoid objects which are in the sun. So you can see here that with the images that I used, I've used a rock which is sitting in the shade. Um, I also tried to keep the photographs that I was taking um, as well as I could as I was just doing it by hand. I didn't have a tripod. Um, to keep the same distance, roughly the same distance for each of the photographs. And you just want to make sure that you photo 360 degrees around your object and also taking some photos which capture the top of the object and around the edge um, to create a really cohesive um, uh, point cloud which will create the uh, the mesh of the 3D object. So all in all I took 81 photos of this rock. So once you go back into Meshroom this is the interface that you'll come across when you open up the app. In this section here you've got your drag and drop for your image files that you would like to use. The next black um, square here is the image viewer once we've dropped our images in. Uh, down in this timeline section is called the graph editor. Then you also have the 3D viewport once it's started to generate your mesh. Um, and then fifth we've got the this section here is the nodes and attributes and then you've got preferences. Um, this toolbar on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to start to drop in the images that we want to use of the rock. So I'll just select the images that I've already organized. I'll drop them into the drag and drop area and you can see here that this is the image view. Um, it is important to quickly go through your images that you, you have taken and remove any which are blurry or slightly blurry. Um, so I'll just go and go through that now. So this app definitely has many different functions. I found uh, the simplest way to achieve what I wanted to achieve to get a 3D scan um, to import within my own projects. I just went down to the graph editor along the bottom here, selected structure for motion, right click and compute where I'm just going to save it at the end. So for the purpose of this, I'll just press don't save. Now you can see here, these are, this is actually a timeline of the process. So you, you can see that it's after that I've, I've actually instructed it to compute up to structure from motion. So it does take a little bit of time. You'll see over here, that you'll get these little camera angles that'll start to set up. And this is 
This is the computer piecing together the mesh from the images that you've provided. So once it ticks through, you can see that it just um, completed part of the feature extraction. Then um, it'll work through the timeline and once that is done, you will start to see um, the outcome in the right-handed viewport. Okay, so that took quite a while for it to go through, probably 15 or 20 minutes. I suppose it depends on how um, how strong your computer is. So it's just loaded in as upside down here. So I've just, I'm just rotating around the view. But you can see that all of these all of these images have created the scene of my object. Okay, so I've just been oscillating around in the viewport. So the next step, we're actually missing the depth map, which gives it a little bit more of its realism. So we're actually going to go to the next step, which is it's exactly the same process with um, a right click and compute, continue, and then it'll work through this timeline again up until this step here. So there are a few um, sort of preferences that you can play around with here. Uh, you can downscale the size, um, the amount of cameras, basically it's, um, the, it'll really depend on the strength of your computer. Um, I found that these preferences, which are the default preferences for me, have worked fine. Um, again, it's just it's already moved through the preparation for the scene, so it's moved on to the depth map. And once this is loaded, I will come back to the video. Um, if you actually toggle through this tab down here, the task manager, it actually tells you a figure of how much has been done and you can see a little bit more um, clearly how long it takes and whether a step has been successful, um, if there's been any issues, uh, this is sort of the task, this is the tab where you would find all of that information. And how this grid isn't level, it's not sitting horizontal, um, you actually can just turn that off here. So, great, so that won't give us motion sickness anymore. Okay, perfect, so that's a success, it's done. We'll go back to the graph editor. There is a, another step, so we want to actually create the meshing now from all of these different points to turn it into an actual uh, like an object so meshing same process again compute continue and then it's going to work through these next couple of steps so I've just done this off screen actually but um, one thing that I found that once the meshing is actually complete Unless you double click on this um, action, it won't show the mesh. It was one thing that I wasn't really sure what I was doing wrong when I first did this. Um, at the moment it's on wireframe, so you can see the geometry that makes up the mesh, but you can go to textured or you can just go to the solid. And it'll actually create the solid of the scene and to remove the cameras out of the way you can actually you can take the tracking ball off and you can reduce the point size all the way down in these display settings here and you can we can see All of the, the depth map has been applied and it's created a, a textured mesh. Uh, okay, so we've done the meshing. We've got our solid mesh here. We've turned off the wireframe, but that you can actually see all of the 
triangles that make up the geometry that we've taken the photographs on so it's quite detailed. Um, I want to see it in the solid. Excellent. Now we want to lay our, our texture as like a material over the top of this mesh and this is taken from our photos. So same process, compute, continue and we will wait again and see. Okay, it's finished. So that was the quickest of them all. Again, I'm going to double tick. We're going to, we need to turn off the solid. So we just hide it. I'm not sure what that one does. I'm going to turn on oh, the gumball and here we are. We've got our texture laid over the top of our mesh. Pretty good. So you can see on the left here in comparison, so the real image to the meshed image. Okay, so the final part of this uh, part one tutorial, because part two, I'm going to look in, uh, look into the process or the workflow of importing it into 3ds Max. So now I'm going to save as and it saves into the, see I've done a couple of other trials here, so I'm going to, uh, I'll just do capitals. Okay, so that's all saving now, and this is where our video ends, so I'll see you in the next one.